Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last series of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokulover. And right now, we have to talk about a worry graphic. President Harrington sat in his office as the hours of the day rocketed past him, all while working with a furious pace on the new set of legislative reports that needed to be handled. With every thought came another pen stroke, another massive change to the face of American life, nevertheless. While hope pranced through the president's mind, the constant thoughts of a snake in the grass lied in the background. These thoughts persisted until the president's work was interrupted with some soft knocking at the door. Getting up to answer, President Harrington was greeted by the VP, Howe, who received a pat on the back from Harrington as he said, Irving, you surprised me. Come sit down. I want to look at that report you told me about. With a smile, Howe and the president sat around his desk. Michael, I have to admit, it's hard to imagine all those out there that get affected by this work. You're nonstop, you know that? Irving asked before setting a manila folder onto the president's desk. Harrington flipped open the folder to peer into the reports laid inside. Reports, graphics, and measurements all which showed another slither of what lies in the grass. Former Southern CMPP members defecting to the populist branch of the far-right MPP, or even the Republicans. One paragraph noted the works chaotic and exhausting had been one of the most common trends in phone polling in regards to the fitting words describing the presidential administration according to the American public. The reactions of the U.S. provided concern, but he knew this wasn't the end. Well, nothing like the morning filled with reports of defection, Harrington said, rubbing his chin. Well, Mike, you know, one concrete fact as well as anyone else. After all these years, people don't like change. Like ripping the band-aid off the paper cut, you know? Irving said with a bit of a chuckle. Harrington sat back in his chairs and reviewed the reports again. You know, us two probably have dealt with more paper cuts than any of these people. What a way to throw a fit, right? The president said, compelling the VP to offer a few more bits of laughter in regards to the happiness of the president. Don't worry, we'll get through this. If we got the presidency, we can get through anything that they want to throw at us, right? Harrington asked, offering his hand. The VP responded with a handshake before leaving the office. Not the worst storm to wait through. So, this happens when we, as the Harrington administration... <clears throat> Pushes our forms a bit too much. The MPP is constantly bickering, which is not good actually at all. But um, so right now we're notable. This happens. This event happens when we get to significant. So we really need to reduce fatigue. But we have no PP. Also, we did finish off the whole Iran thing, so we got extra political power I already spent. I'm um, trying to get this, getting up the other America up to 40, so we can tell their story is really effort extremely good for us. So we're trying to get there. Um, they're displeased for now, which sucks, but. Yeah, uh, we got to be careful, and apparently I I've not been doing technically the right way, so we're technically, I found a guide for us to figure out how to actually get all this, this stuff done, but we're currently doing enticements for the states. The American system is carefully balancing act between the federal government and the state governments. After years of tinkering and then several false starts, the nation found a good balance, however. This does mean that the support of the states is key to President Harrington's hunger bill. His plan to secure America and what the government ought to secure for them. Through promises, handshakes, and other political maneuvering, Harrington can secure the state side uh, support his, his bill needs. Also, is there anything over here about regarding political power? Encourage productivity, uh, destabilizing pacifism, recruitment and outreach, send a bill, ready for war, all wings of the party, down under, more unified, which we're already very, very unified anyway, so doing all this stuff would probably not do very much for us. Um, yeah. No PP there, looks like. Yeah. War support for every nation, yeah, that's not good. So, actually, hmm... We are currently trying to pass the hunger bill. Yeah. All right. Right to water, shelter, and the right to food. Ooh, I can't remember which one we needed to do. The hunger bill. Can we actually do this one? I, you know, this. I don't want to do that one first though. We lose political power. We literally just can't lose power, political power. I'd rather have an extreme cost to, to healthcare than anything else. So, the right to food, food and bill. Uh, let's do the issue of healthcare. Healthcare is as necessary to any citizen as bread and butter. While the American healthcare system may be far superior to the alternatives across the Atlantic and the Pacific, there's some glaring issues with the system. The poorest Americans are continually downtrodden by the sky-high medical costs and poorly regulated insurance companies. Harrington intends to address both of these issues during his time in office. My apologies about this. And we're going to go and grab uh, one of these things. Drafting new regulations to ensure that those seeking health care get the fair deal is atop the agenda following that. Harrington plans to further challenges and injustices of health care both within the system and within the hearts and minds of the populace. There are also some nebulous plans in place for a flagship program to amend the system once and for all. But for now, we just need to address the issue at hand. Once we can do this, because I'll see you in just a little bit. Alright everyone, so, we're gonna, we can do all of these, which is fine, but we're going to be very middle of the ground with these, so the right to shelter. Perhaps more controversially, President Harrington believes the American people have a right to shelter, but don't they? The American dream promises the family, job, and house. Famously, President Hoover promised a chicken in every pot and two cars in every garage. But what of Americans with no pot or garage? Don't they deserve the same opportunity? Thus, a right to shelter. Surely Congress will agree. The right to water. The only thing more key to human survival than food is water. Empires have risen and fallen over who controls it. 
Certainly American people have a right to the lifeblood of humanity. The more President Harrington sees it, there's no right more basic than the right to water. Through discussion and debate, President Harrington can certainly show Congress that water is a key basic right of the American people. And all these things over here. Oh, hey, it's got so much time. So much time. Also, we did, we're able to cut down 15 billion because we had like apparently 15 billion in liquid reserves. I don't even know cost commands for like this stuff here, but like I just tabbed over and like, oh, we have 15 billion. So now it's 75 billion for now until we can't do it anymore. So, oh, actually, we don't have to do the right to water. Ooh. Ooh, we don't have to do that. Oh. We might have to go... You know what? Let's save. You know what? Just because we're going to... We need to blow through as many of these focuses as fast as possible. I'm really hoping that the elections are okay for us. Like I said, I want at least 45 senators at all times, but... We'll see what happens. They hate our reforms, which makes sense. Uh, these are guys are disadvantaged for now. We actually... If, Ooh, oh, actually, wait. So now, earlier, before we did that last focus, we had a few Democrats who wanted to do this, but with enough center and Republican stuff, you know what, if we don't have... Oh, I want to do it. I want to get all, all these guys on here. I don't want to increase public fatigue, though. Healthcare, teacher unions. Talk about... Open talk to the biggest unions in order to secure the support for next educational bill. I'm not going to lose political power. Oh, I, we literally can't do that yet, so... Um, I think we're going to go here to here. Finish this one up first. Um, low worst in seven states. Tuition issue. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm, I might have used cost commands. I've already used it for the cost commands for this campaign, but you know what? Let's go all the way. As long as we get enough senator, senate, center, 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 and PP members, we'll be okay, but... Mm. Decrease in, hey, look, another decrease in poverty. If you want to bet that, please go ahead. Great. Nice. The right to food. The time has come to discuss exactly what the government ought to be doing uh, to, its, to provide its citizens. President Harrington believes that every American has the right to food, and the food bank program assures it's a right that the government can successfully uphold. All the Senate sees it the same way. So, oh god, we need more political power. I'm going to about that. Let's go ahead. Oh, so we're basically halfway done with this. Oh boy, deep south. Oh, it's, it's kind of mixed. Oh. Let's go to the deep south then. And well, I well I clicked on this before we did anything. So okay. Hunger bill. So as long as we have 52, we'll be alright, but still. Uh, let's close that. I'm going to keep going this way. We're going to keep going with the other America. Apparently I'm supposed to decrease the influence of the middle class. I didn't know that. My bad. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Can I build any more cities? No. We're, we're building... Well... That's 21 out of 25, which doesn't make any sense. Can I build any nuclear reactors? No? I mean, we still have some columns to go through as well, so... Alright. Uh, mountain infantry is not bad. Happy 72, everyone. Happy, happy, happy 72. Um, right to water. Yeah. We'll see what happens. So now it's only going up by 4.81, which is not bad still. That's not really bad at all. Secondary schooling is still rapidly improving, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Right to food. And we need every single day of that. That's actually not bad. That's really not too bad at all. Help the bourgeoisie out. And that was one of the comments saying that, uh, is Harrington saying something about the rich when he calls them the bourgeoisie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at 55 center, so. Um, there's nothing about suppressing Republicans or Democrats of the far right, so. Nothing really interesting there yet. So after this, uh, yeah, we got more PP. The Hunger Bill. Think for a moment on how many Einsteins have died in the gutter, how many Shakespeare's, how many Washingtons did they not deserve the same chance as their successful counterparts. In President Harrington's America, there'll be no more lost art, no more forgotten breakthroughs. In President Harrington's America, we'll say that every man was created equal and we mean it. The government is there to protect and provide for the American people, and through the Hunger Bill, it's finally doing that. The American people have certain inalienable rights, the right to freedom of speech, the right to vote, and now the right to sound, sleep soundly. Knowing that they'll not have to find the next meal out of a dumpster. Cool. And I'm probably going to redo this sometime. And I might have used consequences, maybe you'll see. And they're still leaning somewhat towards NPP in some various areas. Um, upper South, maybe? Maybe we'll do Upper South. I'm going to keep getting more support here, so we're... With so many senators, we're, we're definitely going to be losing some, right? There's no way we can get more. There's, there's, there's just no way. Well, since we're here anyways. Uh, popularity. The other America, definitely. Who intensify persuasion? That's not bad to do, because right now we are at what? Notable, which is still really bad. 
I still want to do this. Working class is still influential. These guys like dislike our reforms. Pick up. How about the other America? Yeah, apparently I found a guide, like I said, about this campaign for Harrington, which I should have read or looked up before I actually started doing this. But like, he apparently wanted to start with a thousand political power before he started him. But oh well, it is what it is. Yeah, as much I really want to do this, but. I don't know if we'll actually be able to get through all this. We should be able to, but... Like, we'll be focusing on this only. Like, some people say, like, focus on this a little bit. Like, balance it out, but... It's kind of hard to do that. So, um, I'm going to do the issue of health care next. Uh, talking with teachers' unions. You know what? It gives us some more support from the unions. So, for our next educational bill. Uh, the teachers' unions have been a mainstay of education since the formation under the auspices of President Kennedy. Though, through them, wages and welfare programs for the teachers of the country are coordinated, and they remain a decisive player in the education of business. If we want to start changing the classrooms of America, negotiations are inevitable. In theory, we should have no problem pushing for educational reforms, but in practice, the unions can be rather hesitant to the sort of changes we propose. It will take some time to iron out proposals that we can both abide by. Oh, guys. God dang it, guys. I just want to suppress other parties, man. Come on, can we just do that, please? Harrington fights the Congress for the Hunger Bill. Once more, the Congress of the United States has set itself to battle amongst itself regarding President Michael Harrington's conceived Hunger Bill, in which he set forth the prospect of the rights to food, water, and shelter for every American citizen, regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, or working occupation. President Harrington, the man back behind a wealth of welfare reforms in the U.S. has regarded such guarantees as being centrally linked to a truly free, fair, and just human society, and has even made ambitious steps forward in his pursuits for care for every American citizen, whether they ought to be the average worker or for the poor man left out on the street, whose situation may change with each passing vote tonight. Many of them the administration collaborated with the president for the past few months in composing such legislation, particularly Orville Freeman, the Secretary of Agriculture, who worked diligently with the program and other prog progressive reforms comments, denied Congress to decide the fates of those lowly men, women, and children who lie on the streets cold at night. Every unfortunate soul scarred by the horrors of the Second World War, the plagues of economic uh, difficulties or otherwise, they all know if we as a society have learned to care for such folk or leave them in the dust so as so many presidents, presidents have before. Once more, however, not everyone is in favor of the president's actions. Well, some may call them progressive, R.D. Congressman, as well as several of Harrington's constituents in the NPP, regard them as simply radical. Even his own administration cites anxieties as President Secretary Neuberger raised several concerns, most likely in regard to the cost of the programs that President Harrington has worked on. However, she declined on the next comment to comment tonight. What will Harrington have in store for the next nation? So we're next for the nation. The bill passes. So we get more GDP growth, more stability, and uh, just pretty much the effects of what we kind of figured what would happen. So then we'll do this one next, because we'll say this is definitely for last. Voting on the A A A A A A A. Yeah. The triple A. Triple A. Go get some singers. And worry about that, please go ahead. Not bad. Alright, growth. Well, this is a 1%. This is 0.8%. What the heck? We've been lied to. Um hmm. East Coast, maybe? Let's do Great Plains eventually. Yeah. Let's do Great Plains first. Oh, well. That was their side down there. Yeah, just, just in case, because they're leaning, leaning, tilting. So, we'll do that anyways. You never have enough PP. When you start out this campaign, it's like, oh, we have a lot of political power. No, not really. Sorry, that was my water bottle. Um, God dang it. Can we not strengthen the pro-American sentiment anywhere else? Alright, talk with the teachers' unions and the issue of healthcare. So we've got one of these done, which is nice. I mean, I really want to do this, but it just does not give us another political power. Directly strengthens the working class. Fair earnings for the workers. Um, push past AMA. Look great for teachers. It had been a quick event, no more than half an hour. A brief address by the president celebrating the good that teachers do. Group and individual photos with the 12 delegates sent by various teachers' unions, all smiles and flashbulbs. Afterwards, they all retired to the map room for coffee and sh a shop talk. None of their union representatives are particularly intimidating at first glance, but all of them hold the keys to one of America's biggest structures of power, education. At one point, Jacqueline Vaughn, a Chicago union delegate with kind eyes and a spine of iron, raised a cup of coffee and toast. To President Harrington, we of the Chicago Teachers' Union have no permanent enemies and no permanent friends, but you're coming very close to the ladder, sir. Smiles trickles on a smattering of applause, but she meant it ever since the passage of the ECEA, EA. with its major new extensions of funding and support, it's become clear that the teachers' unions of America are firmly in the Harrington camp. How to use them is another matter, but for now, it's good to have them on our own side. 
Middle class, oh, relations with the middle class will improve. The rich already hates us, so it doesn't even matter, so. Hey, at least that's good. Oh, God, yes, let's get this. Come on, we gotta improve the other America. Let's keep this open for now. We got four days left, which is good. And then, regulating insurance. Ooh, that's not bad. The rich will hate us more. Popularity will go up in North and Midwest, which we do like. Um, lowering healthcare costs. The pharmaceutical companies don't like that. Well, what a surprise. What a flippin' surprise. God dang, pharmaceutical companies. Oh, come on, guys. We don't have any other big guns to pull out because of that now. Uh, uh, we'll do this one first. Insurance is really enough to cover entirely the cost of healthcare in an event of sudden illness. The poorest Americans can find themselves out of pocket at the worst possible moment. Doctors do, not, do deserve to be paid well for the work they do, as do pharmaceutical companies for the medicines they provide, but we can do better for the people. By providing additional subsidies to medical practices and encouraging those within the system to root out inefficiency, we can drive down the cost of healthcare for the average consumer. This will ensure that impoverished patients can get the treatment they need while the doctors can still get their well-earned paycheck. And healthcare. Healthcare, healthcare. That's all I can say is healthcare. Uh, hey, yay! Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now they're 29. Um, average. Yeah. 22 is really bad. We're going to keep boosting up. How about the other America rise? Um, reassure the upper class. We can increase the influence, but reduce our fatigue by quite a bit, which is actually not, not terrible. Influence will increase. Um, promote restrained legislation. It's okay to do this once if you really need it, but I think we're going to help the other America rise still. What is this one? Reassure the working class. Yeah, improving relations is okay, but not really necessary. And where do we want to do this one? South. Ooh, Southwest for the house is not looking good. Ooh, South. Oh, we gotta do Southwest. Yeah, let's do. Let's do Southwest. It really doesn't matter which one we choose. So there you go. The issue of healthcare. Eighty-six billion. Oof. Oof. All right. We're still 50, it keeps going up 53. Earlier, like last episode was 49, then 51, now 53, which is really nice, don't get me wrong, but we gotta regulate the insurance companies. Private insurance companies have historically been regulated by state governments. This results in a wide discrepancy of corporate conduct from state to state tax, with some companies utilizing ta lax regulations in certain, in certain states to avoid paying out to those who need assistance by setting up secure clauses and inane per particularities in contractual agreements. We must close these dishonest loopholes to ensure people receive the help that they truly deserve. Apologies for this spend cut. The president wishes to ensure that all insurance companies across America must read from the same rulebook. Hinton intends to introduce a single federal set of regulations that will ensure that there is nowhere that the law can be used against people in need. Drafting and rolling out these regulations will take a while, but the effort will be worth it for the benefit of the people. And the middle class will like us a little more, and we do some, get some more political power, which is nice. The RD primaries. Um, I think I've read this one before, actually, so if you want to read about this, please go ahead. Gov McGovern, staunchly liberal Republican, has asset amnesty and abortion. <laughs> Hey, 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 is that what we're passing down here? We're passing acid, amnesty, and abortion down here? Alright. Uh, and then we have uh, the other guy. Uh, uh, Robert McNabb, Mr. Numbers. Uh, can't, President for Prosperity? McGovernment. Well, if you want to be this, please go right ahead. Uh, let's go with... I want to say that sounds just too radical, but nothing's too radical for America, so... <sighs> acid, amnesty, and abortion. It's just what the people want, right? Polls are updated. How bad are we losing? So now they're at 34. We just gotta get them to moderate. Just that's all we need. One a day. That's not bad, man. That's not bad. Can we suppress people? Please let us. Oh, finally. Yeah, suppress the Democrats. They're that, the second largest group here. So suppress them. Suppress them. Suppress them. Now the MPP party is holding the presidential convention in Miami Beach, Florida once again with the delegates from the all corners of America arriving at the convention center to kick off the general election. Normally the president on the sitting party would easily breeze through the primary season and be acclaimed at the convention. Stretching late in the evening morning before the result was announced, Michael Harrington, four more years. Who saw that one coming? The Federal Health Care Regulations Act. After studying the health care crisis in detail, Harrington has developed solutions ranging from forcibly lowering the drug price costs, reducing inefficiencies, and developing uniform insurance company regulations. The president is ready to send his bill to the floor of the house. My apologies, and let's just do, we did Southwest earlier, um, god dang it, uh, oh god, this is not good for us, Deep South, Upper South, Southwest, Great Lakes, let's go Great Plains again. 
This His bill is not only the health care bill he intends to pass, but it's a crucial first step. It tightens and standardizes regulations on insurance payers or providers at the federal level. It'll make it impossible for insurance providers to deny coverage based on pre-existing conditions, for example. Passing his bill, first bill will make it easier to get Medicare through in the future. Hey, operational success. Good. Thank goodness. Well done, gentlemen. Don't look at the depth. All right, so we're back at 90. God dang it, 34. We'll get up to, we need to get at least 40 to get to average. So, uh, here out. No, we want to improve. There you go. All right, not bad. Not bad. Could be, could be better. Republicans, nope. We're going to suppress everybody. Because as long as we got enough center, we don't need Republicans. Or Democrats with the far right, so. Which, I don't know why they call it the far right. Like, you you don't want to be branded far anything. So, like, well, they just call it the right wing. No matter if they're super far right or just not even that far right anyway. So, so I've always kind of wondered. But handling conservative opposition. Pushing past the AMA. Oh, let's do that one first. The American Medical Association has caused headaches for progressive Americans since its inception. It helped upheld racial segregation within its con constituent groups. It combats any attempts at implementing medical malpractice laws. At, uh, <clears throat> It combats any attempt at implement, implementing medical malpractice laws. It even blocked attempts to hire physicians fleeing Nazi domination in Europe. And today presents the single greatest lobbying threat to President Harrington's healthcare reform. The AMA has launched an outreach campaign they call Operation Coffee Cup to turn the public against Medicare, but since doctors are educated men, perhaps they can be reasoned with. Harrington will reach out to the AMA to negotiate. He'll sit down for coffee with them, explain that by providing them better care to all Americans, they'll be upholding the Hippocratic Oath. He'll say that he could potentially compromise on doctor's salaries and prescription drug prices and assure them that they still have a future under Medicare. There we go. Campaign some more. Uh, suppression? Intelligence report's fine with me. It's just lots of suppression, please. Deep South. I mean, they're, most of them are Democrats and far-right members anyway, so I'm not really too worried about the South. Southwest, probably. Southwest or Great Lakes. Uh, let's do Great Lakes. Pause it up. Oh, boy. It's already August. Oh, God. Oh, God. Can we, I don't think we'll be able to... Actually, are we trying to pass anything? Like... Oh, here we go. Whoopsie. I should... Oh, I mean, we have the center. So we have the far-right center says yes, even though we have six of them. But, okay, the Democrats and Republicans love it. So 15 plus 61 is usually 76? 76? 77? I love... I love having a massive majority in the Senate. God. <sighs> Politics. Just only in video games are they okay. Voting on the H FHRA. Improving healthcare for everyone should be an easy sell, but American politics is nothing if not aggravating. MPP whips and aides have spent the last several weeks leaning on every party legislator along with plenty of liberals from across the aisle. All stops have been pulled out. Discreet dinners in D.C. townhouses. Activist groups st staging sit-ins at senators' offices. Hearings uh, that have been held with the witnesses ranging from doctors to economists to impoverished elders begging for life-saving care. The FHRA is a personal for President Harrington. Many of those elders were people he's met before in grimy apartments and on ramshackle farmsteads. Success in the FHRA could mean that the lives of millions across the country improve dramatically. If it fails to pass, though, it will be a dramatic loss for the Harrington administration. There's no denying that, even more so for the country. But who could vote against letting people go to the doctor? The bill passes. Oh, that's actually really good. We place private health care with public health care. We get more political power, which is incredibly good. So the middle class will like this. The working class, everyone but the rich will like this. And it will reduce some of the accumulated fatigue. That is, huh. That is not bad. Uh oh, it's significant. That's really not good, though. You know what? Let's do this one. Um, fatigue would decrease by 10. Five, you know, I'm going to risk this one. Upper class, let's decrease by 10. Let's do that one first. Will they help out at all, maybe? Oh, that's not good. That's not good. They just like our reforms. They're sends moderate on reforms. Huh. They're disadvantaged. Well, it's crap. 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 <laughs> crap. Handling conservative opposition. Some voices within the conservative wing of the government are criticizing Harrington's healthcare policies. Democrat, far-right, or just right-wing MPP and a few Republican senators are calling out our handling of the issue unnecessarily interventionist and a waste of government resources. This presents a problem for our administration and brings into the question the ability to push through further reform. The president and his party intend to counter the opposition through a mixture of meaningful dialogue, sharp critique, and minor concessions. We can appease a more moderate opposition by agreeing to just help see some of their pet causes forward through the Senate, and perhaps diluting a few of our more radical proposals slightly. As for our more staunch critics, we need to come out swinging on the Senate floor to dismiss our arguments. The Godfather releases. If you want to about that, please go right ahead. Ave Maria, gracia plena. Actually, this was the 22 down to 25. Nice. Let's go ahead and help the other America rise now, and then we can tell their story next. So we'll get up to moderate next. God, who was running these campaigns? <laughs> Seriously. How much do you have to suck? 
Oh god, we got like a month left. Oh no, 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 no. Oh god, that means we have to compromise then. Ah. Maybe. Alright, so we're here. Who's next? Um, it's likely. Maybe the Rockies. Yeah, let's go with the Rockies leaning toss up. Let's go lock Rockies next. Woo! Another comment was uh, someone says the Thurman trial, like from the last episode, is actually bugged. Um, and we're supposed to get an actual full conviction. So it is what it is, I guess. Look at that. 50. Oh, one, one more percent. Nice. I don't know. This doesn't make any sense, man. Like, I get we're trying to do stuff, but why is popularity continuing to go up? Like, bro. Like, there should be a much bigger backlash. Like, compared to the LBJ run I did in the past, like, we're getting more and more support. Yeah, there's fatigue and stuff, but, like, there should be more. But a letter from Gallup, New Mexico. Mr. President. Look, my grandfather always called Gallup Kalabwakan. That's a town's name in Zuni, in the language he spoke. My parents never spoke it around me, although my cousin works at a school in Zuni Pueblo that teaches it to the little kids. I hope to say mine there someday, when I was growing, uh, growing up in Gallup, though. My parents didn't spend much time caring about school. My father was a dishwasher, and my mother was a hotel maid. The highways were being built, and with them came travelers, tourists, and all those people. It brought money and jobs, but no one got rich. Not even close. My parents drank. They never did drugs, but most of my friends had at least one parent who did. We're all desperate. Once I left home, I moved across town with a boy I met up at Gallup, Gallup High School. He ran off three years later to work construction in Albuquerque. It left me with two toddlers and barely any way to make ends meet, but when I could vote, Mr. President, I voted for you. Your efforts to help help me get through food, get enough food on my table. And now I could toss it out by my landlord. I know a lot of folks around here who feel the same, so thank you, Mr. President. You helped. Sincerely, Valerie Penquetua. Cool. A right, not a privilege. There is an unfortunate perception in America, the belief that healthcare is not a necess necessary utility, like food or water, but a luxury to be afforded by those who have earned it. This attitude has hindered any significant health care reform in the past, with many feeling that the poorest do not deserve any help in this regard. Harrington intends to challenge this perception both in the halls of power and across America at large. We must press the idea that health care afforded to all is not just a moral compass of action, but also the most efficient one. Giving aid to those at their lowest point is more the most surefire way of getting them out of the hole and returning them to a dignified position in society. We introduce, supporters of the North will approve, the West Coast pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industry will disapprove of this. But they're rich anyway, so we don't care. Polls are updated, very nice. Here we go, boys, we're going to tell their story. Improve relations, which is, okay, we already have it maxed out pretty much. Influence decreased fatigue by 5, which is not bad. Just, hey, it's going up, nice, nice, nice. It's notable, awesome, awesome. That's better than significant, so, tell the story. Awesome, that's actually really good. Uh, get some advanced heli sub submarinos. Oh boy, 41 billion! Oh my gosh! Cool! And we'll see what happens. You gotta keep spending, son. I think we're pretty much past any military intervention, so we could cut down the cost by this point. It doesn't matter. Oh god, oh, I'm gonna. Oh man, I just hope. What's coming up now? Please, please don't screw this up. Come on, senators! You gotta stay in your seats! <laughs> All right, not a privilege. Serving up southern pork. Mr. President, have you understood the position that this vote puts me in? Uh, the congressmen and senators stand around the Oval Office. Each one represents the small businesses, chambers of commerce, and a sort of bigwigs of the South, and the President Harrington can barely contain his contempt. They may have found his party, but he feels no obligation to do anything but tolerate them. Nevertheless, they took a hard vote on the FHRA, and they've received plenty of less than kind feedback from the constituents now. They're coming to push the administration to make penance. This contract for a new corps will create 200 new jobs in Birmingham. Spartanburg, sir, is in desperate need of improvements to its hospitals. The fact that more than a third of the Florida's fruit producers need the subsidy, this subsidy, to continue operating uh, profitability. On and on they go. Not all the proposed budget items are strictly necessary, but that's the point. A bit of extra funding sent to the South's way might help mollify the MPP's base, but it'll also suck up political capital that the administration could surely use somewhere else. Fine. Do you have your contracts? Uh, Gorza, more unified. I like that. More divided. Oh, I can't do more divided. Are you kidding me? <laughs> a little worse. Now, you have your contracts. Screw it. Assessing financial resources. The president's plans to neatly tie up the reforms of the medical insurance agency, though it will require significant funding to carry out. We still face stiff resistance from the fiscal conservatives in the Senate, so the onus is on us to check our pockets and figure out how we're all going to pay for all this stuff. Harrington intends to create a committee to assess our current financial commitments to the healthcare industry and decide where we can reconfigure our funds. We could potentially secure additional funding and a few extra taxes to provide for it with some convincing in the Senate, but for now, we just need to figure out how much money we can reasonably put forward. God dang it, you ding-dongs. <laughs> Tax increase will have to be added to the Medicare. Oh, it's not made. Oh, that's not good. 
slightly increased fatigue, election day 72. More than a year of announcements, debates, and rallies and speeches have come to an end on uh, November 7th, 1972, the election day. Millions of Americans have lined up at school gymnasiums, libraries, civil centers, and fire stations across the nation to fulfill their civic and democratic duty. This year marks the 47th quadrennial presidential election. There will also be 20 state and territorial gubernatorial elections to decide governors, 33 Senate seats, and all 435 seats in the House of Representatives, and many other local state elections for mayor, councilors, sheriffs, judges, all across the nation, and more. However, the presidential elections, what everyone is tuning into the radio and TV to learn about as the polls are closed. As the night goes on and the votes are counted and reported, it soon becomes clear who will be sitting in the White House for the next four years. President Harrington. Oh, God, please don't tell me we lost that many. Uh, so let's look, look at the election. So, actually, we performed better than in the last election. I think we actually got the same amount of electoral votes. We actually have more people voting for the NPP than the last time. Oh, God, what is it? We are all... This is the third time this is bad word happened. We gain more senators. Screw everyone else. We're going all the way, man. All the way with E M H. Yeah, that doesn't work very well. I want to. S what happened? Seriously, like, is this bugged? I haven't used console commands at all. Like, bro. Like, we only use them in the very beginning to get the stuff for R uh, RFKN. Bro, how did the Democrats get bigger and the center get the center got bigger? What? The Republicans and the far right are basically dead. They're dead parties. There's only two parties in America now. The Democrat Party and the center. Look at the solid South. <laughs> Holy crap. Jesus Christ. Like, bro. Bro. Okay, screw everyone else. We're going all the way, man. Like, we gotta go fast before the next Senate election. I've never had three... Continuous elections where we gain more and more and more support. This is insane. Something has got to be bugged. Like, holy crap. Uh, but another comment from yesterday saying that every 1964, 1968 president has a different meeting with Martin Borman. If you accept his offer, will we spend 100 political power to see what he had to say? So, yeah. Apparently there's different meetings, so. Interesting. Cool. Assess financial resources, yes. Well, at this point, like... Hopefully we can still pass everything. A visit from Victor Reuther. He'd come to the White House with hundreds of pa pages of policy and more than enough goodwill to get through the front door. Victor Reuther stood before the resolute desk, watching as President Harrington flip through the summary pages. His face, half paralyzed two decades earlier in an attempt at killing, looked unusually enthusiastic. Harrington liked Victor. They both shared moral righteousness and an obsession with the particulars of organization. Harrington had turned the White House upside down. He had turned the... Victor had turned the United Auto Workers into a labor empire. And now he'd come up with a radically new proposal for Medicare. Victor, this would essentially render the private insurers obsolete. That's the point, Mr. President. Why should we let anyone fall through the cracks when we have this opportunity? It'd be heck of a lot harder to pass at all, that's why. I know it'd be a tough to sell, but it's the right thing to do, and the policy shop in Detroit has been running polls lately. I know for a fact that we can sell it. Harrington took a deep breath in as moral and political calculations swirled in his head. It's the right thing to do. We'll get more political power. We'll get more political power. It can't just be done right now, Victor. Bro. The Republicans support it. The far right supports it. It's the right thing to do. So two, all, I mean, 63, 65, 66, 67. I mean, Mike. <sighs> Establishing Medicare. Medicare is Harrington's ultimate answer to the health care insurance. A national insurance program funded by small payroll tax on higher earning salaries. Medicare will create an additional safety net for the elderly, the young, disabled, and those stricken by illness, among other cases. Most of the costs of health, hospital care, and professional support for the enrolled citizens will be covered by the program, with the remainder being covered by the now regulated private companies. Though the program provides much needed financial security to those who need it, we must naturally face opposition in the Senate. We must make them see that this program will be invaluable to make to every American, be they sick or in good health, so that we can give the people the safety net that they deserve. Well, if you want about those, please go right ahead. All right, everyone. So right now, I've already gone ahead and improved the influence of the other America. We're 25 or displeased. It is what it is. Um, there's not much doing here, except we're doing establishing Medicare. And then we're going to go ahead and do issue of higher education. So one, two, three, four. So let's do this one. Issue of higher education. Or visible and invisible. Many of the folks who come out to witness Harrington's second inauguration hadn't been there to watch him four years ago. Perhaps they'd just been interested in politics, or just weren't. Perhaps they couldn't even afford a fare that come to Washington. Or the depth of their poverty made them the prospect of working for the day far more important than coming out. Now, they were all here. As he finished reciting the oath of office, he surveyed the assembled crowd and saw people uplifted from their sorrows. The sight alone was more than enough to a reward for his work, but he knew that he still had more to do. It's often said that a chain is only so long as its weakest link. So, too, is a nation only as so great as its humblest man. When he and his kindred are stricken, and the nation does not rise to the task of uplifting them, or him. It's effectively split itself in two. It is split between a nation of opulence and splendor, and a silent nation of want. For a nation to be great, it must not 
allow this fractured silence. Four years ago, I said before you and vowed to never allow the silence again. And now you, the people, stand before me, and no, you are no longer silent. But it's not sufficient for the nation to plaster over the gaps. The cracks must be truly healed, and inequalities of the nation truly addressed before the specter can finally be slain. Let's go forth in the interest of the land and of the people. Let's work to once and for all end the wanton and misery in the country. Let's try to fulfill the true potential of this nation and allow all to enjoy its bounty. America shall truly be one and indivisible, and never again shall we allow an invisible and impoverished world exist right beneath our noses. Wild applause greeted his closing remarks. President Harrington smiled, but he knew that his words alone could not move a nation. Four years had been spent doing precisely what he warned against. His efforts are a mere bandage over the wound of want. Now he had four more years and had to make him count. Poverty's grip over the other America had been weakened, and now is the time to cut it loose forever. To prosperity and the end of need. They say that the reward for finishing a hard task is to be given a harder task than the last. Such an issue now confronts us as the reform agenda proceeded on the universities of America. The situation is decidedly suboptimal. The university is a place of privilege, an elite institution only available to those who could afford the extravagance of higher education. For us, there were training schools that were always too packed, too unfunded, too lacking. This basic imbalance must be corrected if we are to pursue excellence. For an undereducated adult is an impoverished one. And if Adam and Eve were cast out of the Garden of Eden for the knowledge, what will happen if our people are denied theirs? Oh, we can do a lot here, can't we? Oh, we have 140. Voting on Medicare. The most radical policy yet put forward by the Harrington administration, as the New York Times put it. Love it or hate it, that seems to be the consensus around Medicare. The poor and working class have rallied around the bell, seeing as a massive improvement for millions. Unions in particular have been flexing their potential muscles, pressuring NPP and Republican Democrat legislators alike through letter-writing campaigns and fundraisers. On the other hand, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce has taken the lead in opposing the bill. They have their own letter-written campaigns, and much more opposing fundraisers. Opposing fundraisers. The Chamber has been called Medicare the first step on the road to tyranny, a waste of money, handout, plenty of other things besides. A sizable tax burden that's been plastered across the editorial pages of half the country's newspapers hasn't helped the administration's case much. With both sides jockeying for Congress to vote their way, it's anyone's game and the American healthcare system depends on how all that goes. Medicare for all who need it. We can even more political power, stability, or support, or group of population. Uh, MPP will look worse in Southern states, which is whatever. And then we look better in Northern states. Significantly increased pu public fatigue. Ooh, that's not good. Free universal care. Wow, we get a lot more population. The cost is just extreme. Oh, we lose some political power too. Well, that's not good. Notable? Oh boy. We do have some here. I want to increase. Ooh. Persuasion increase. I don't mind that one. It's only 30. I don't want to increase the influence though, these guys. 62, 67 would be pretty high. Reduce the influence would be very good to do. I want to help the other America rise still because getting them up would be better. We could tone down rhetoric. Um, I. Reassure the upper class. Influence of the rich will be increased. It's 53. If we do that, you know what? I'll do that once. Let's do that once. And, but we're also going to do... I want. They love our forms, of course. Working class. Let's improve the working class, maybe? Let's do that, because it costs less. So, a kind of a good balancing act between those two. But yeah, issue of higher education. And now I go for a second term. America remains the hope of freedom and justice. Honestly, this looks better. In my opinion, than this one. So, can we get a picture like that instead? A portrait, maybe? I don't know. I'm just a guy online. Opening the league. For many of our citizens, the idea of upper mobility is a bad joke. Those born into circumstances have very few opportunities to improve their lives. The American higher education system is among the best in the world, and yet its doors remain closed to much of the population. The increasing costs of attending college are causing some of the greatest minds in our nation to go squandering. Or squandered. If the American dream is truly to be believed, we must work to assure the college is available to every and even the poorest of our citizens. A nation can only grow stronger with a higher education. Higher education educated populace. A higher education means better pay and ultimately a better life. From there, we can push into the upper crust into Yale, Harvard, Cornell. The Ivy League is known worldwide as extremely elite institutions. These most prestigious of schools have been prohibitively expensive, allowing only the wealthy to attend, of course, until now. Numbers don't lie. Um, oh. Oh, crap. Once more, President Harrington found himself working diligently um, on the herring work presented in front of him to solve the nation's issues. Yet so... Even so, for one of the first times in his life, that snake continued to crawl into President's optimism. Harrington finally put his pen down and offered a small chuckle, saying, People fickle, huh? Before chuckling a bit more, yet, as the President took the same, so, took some time for himself, work always seemed to find himself as another set of knocks ringing against the door of the Oval Office. What's, in, what's it like out there on the front lines, Irving? Harrington asked, as VP Howell stepped forward. Irving offered a small handshake in return, while Michael, another report came in about the defections in the South, a follow-up from the other day. He said, unveiling another set of reports. President Harrington took a while to carefully read through the set of paperwork, and once again, New punches thrown at his optimism came with every single page. The numbers were accurate as a basis of his support continued to make moves against or towards joining the Republicans and the far right of the MPP. A bit of confusion filled upon filled him upon seeing a new growth of defections in the Rockies rather than the South. And a bit of shock came as he saw that some of the reported their tiredness bringing them towards the left of the MPP and the Yaquis on the other side. But what's going on, Irving? The president said, or asked, sounding a bit beaten up. Still a bit cheery, though. 
The VP took a few seconds for the president to get his worries up before speaking, saying, Michael, you and I have worked a long time to getting people to sympathize with the progressive movement. But what's one of the biggest responses we've always got whenever we made a speech or published an article? The president took a few slow breaths before responding, working towards building up his cheerfulness or cheeriness. What's more as he thought of the years that have flown by alongside his best friend, Hal himself. Of the battles fought and the victories won alongside one another, we shake things up, don't we, Irving? Many of our voters in the South become disillusioned. Fine, whatever, it does, they don't matter. Rockies is kind of not good. And legislative support for Jenna Falls. That's not good. Um, so we're going to continue improving this. Um, you know what? We have 60 right now. Intensify persuasion. Oh, honestly, 60 fatigue is not good. It's notable still. It's a moderate. That's interesting. Huh. Tone down rhetoric. Working class relations with other America will decrease. Yeah, it's not worth it. Middle class. Influence will be increased. Five or five? Well, I'll do this once. Why not? We'll do it once. We'll try it once. Still notable, which is not good. And we'll do opening the league, higher education, and they're going to blitz through here, and then after we get all four of these done, then we'll do this one, and we should be okay. We should be okay, right? Right? Hopefully. Costs. We had another 10 billion for some reason, but. Ooh, look at that deficit. Who needed a balance budget? Oh boy. Open in the league. And then the Higher Education Act. Now the question of tuition has been solved. We are ready to bring the Higher Education Act to the Senate floor. This act will set caps on tuition for all universities, public and private, and expand federal subsidies for college students. The carrot on the end of the stick for the universities is increased subsidies to expand their student residencies, hire more faculty, and offer more programs for the growing student body. Opponents of cry this act is spending billions of taxpayer dollars for kids to get stoned and learn communism from hippie professors. However, President Harrington and supporters see this act as expanding our intellectual base and enabling many families to send their children to university for the first time in their history. If this act passes, it's a, it will affect a sea of change in academic life. And hopefully not balloon up or inflate uh, degrees too much. Because my god, is it competitive. Oh boy. 54, so good. Senate, the Republicans support it. Democrats, that's a, that's a lot of Democrats. But some of them support it. 1, 2, 56. Or, yeah, 56 and 61. So that's not bad still. Still not too bad. The unity between the MPP and us... The, actually... That's better than it used to be. Huh, that's not bad, actually. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, do an Intel report because you can. Um, anything else? Not really. So up next, we're going to improve uh, these guys up here, too. I would like to send moderate... The middle class hates our reforms. It's a tuition issue. Why should a public school system charge the public money to attend? That's a question posed by recent cover of by recent cover in The Nation. That's a story in which it made its way through the White House, and more than a few MPP lawmakers have mentioned it as the Higher Education Act's drafting process rolls on. It does make sense. The government doesn't charge kindergartners for the privilege of attending their neighborhood schools after all. Numerous progressives are clamoring for this policy change to ensure that college placements are based on merit alone and that no student should have to worry about tuition fees at a state school. But by contrast, every fiscal conservative worth the title has come out of the woodwork to talk about how the additional funding will have to come from someplace else. Caught in the middle of the students, but in such a political fight, there are more than no, little more than numbers on a page. Pay the professor somehow. Okay. Really, if you want to go to Arizona State, you, maybe we should be paying you. Be more effective. Okay. Increase public fatigue. Crap. <laughs> That's all I can say is crap. <laughs> Tone down. Oh, favor the middle class. I don't want their influence. I want them to like us more. So, yeah. The other America. If we can get up to 60, that would be really good. Then they'll go to influential, which would be very nice for us. Um, we're running out of things to do here. We really are. That sucks. Is, you know what? Here. Come down here. I don't want to deal with the research anymore. Help the bourgeoisie out. The cracks form. Oh, crap. Oh, this is so bad. Okay, so now we got to really think about this. The sinking feeling within the Missouri and President's chest continued to rock him with every persistence on his emotional turmoil. The aching feeling shook the man to his core, and yet Michael Harrington could not bear to turn away from the thoughts plaguing him originally. He could offer some understanding towards the citizens' concern for the rapid change, even if it helped them. Because, hey, change can be difficult. But now, concerns seemingly transformed into daggers launching into the President's back. Harrington watched onwards as, he, as news of the predatorize, the entire affair revolving around the divisions beginning to form within the MPP all across the country, in regards to its cabinet successes. Finally, the South has begun to slow down the numbers retreating towards the far right, if only because the majority of those willing to defect had already done so by now, and yet, 
As the president watched onwards, it can only feel I see betrayal as a newscaster pointed to the other areas of the U.S., pointing out towards new emerging areas of political upheaval. Scenes of protesters gathering in the Rockies to combat his aggressiveness and changing the political atmosphere, with one group leader proclaiming that the president has frustrated the government with his radical attempts to flip the table on them as he continuously butts heads with the Congress to try to get these ridiculous proposals out. They're tired and we are too. Everywhere blended together to deliver a punch to the president's gut. As he watched the black and white TV broadcast images of his foundation support, the Midwest, his own homeland, Missouri and the Pacific acting in defiance with small gatherings looking to turn against his actions. Every demonstration showing every showcasing of American people's exhaustion with the conflicts in Washington. Every banner sign and action against President Harrington served to cut away at the strings of the president's heart. Had he not done what was right, the president thought as he saw images of a Yaki rally. <clears throat> In Kentucky, in a brawl breaking up between C and CPP members and some Democrats in the far-right MPP members in Minneapolis. With a few knocks on the doors, VP Howe entered the Oval Office to deliver news of the broadcast of the president. As he entered, he saw the president standing, wiping his eyes as he watched the news. My apologies, Michael. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's all right, Irving. South is gone. The Rockies, even the North. God dang it. The center's still holding strong, though. That's all that matters, right? And besides, they already elected us to do the job, right? So, like, bro, you, you elected us to do our job. Why, why are you complaining? Uh, at this point, I think we just need to do fatigue stuff. Just do fatigue. You know what? We can probably hit, get the hit to legislation. I'm going to do this once. It's probably really bad. We're going to do it once. It's okay to do it once. I've heard, so. Small. Okay, so now it's small. That's not bad. I, that's not bad. Just how bad does it hurt our support, though? Because if 63... We have 63 senators. We should still have more. Yeah, 63. It'll, it'll be fine. Democrats are fine with it. Well, not really, but whatever. I don't care. I don't care what the Democrats are fine with. Tackling abusive practices. Our founding fathers secured the nation as one of the freedom, equality, and liberty. Why, then, are these very concepts crushed daily by the boot of lopsided employer-employee relationships? Though it's hardly as far as we must go to really free the workers of America as for now. We can at least seek to crush overtly abusive practices. So, everyone will like this. Except the rich, but we don't care. I don't want to lose the power of voting on the Higher Education Act. Direct mail flyers of warrant of higher taxes. Radio plays mock interviews of stoner college kids. TV advertisements show images of writing students. All this and more have ensured that the Higher Education Act is one of the most controversial proposals that the Harrington administration has put before Congress. It's a tough tightrope to walk for many legislators. Everyone wants the grateful constituents' testimonials. I'm proud of the first and the family college kids, but nobody wants to deal with the potential culture war that's been brewed up. The MPP whips have been doing their best, but at this point, it's anyone's game. New cost doesn't matter. Um, yeah, significantly increased. God dang it. I should have saved this one for last, but whatever. Public higher education. God dang it. This no oh god, it's notable again. You know what? I'll do it one more time. Tone down rhetoric? Uh no, I'll do the other one. Decreased fatigue by five. You know what? We'll do that one. That's really good. We're we're not we don't have that much support anymore. Building a safety net. We must make sure every American is protected, and we certainly cannot throw those who cannot either work or simply t between jobs under the bus. We need to create some kind of safety net for Americans who need it. There are those in America who cannot afford to get a job. The price of gas, a nice outfit, child care, team building, exercises. The pr prices rack up, and soon people can't break out of the cycle of poverty. President Harrington says no more. Through a system of unemployment benefits, all Americans will have the basic means of work, means to survive while finding work. Some of the Southern Party members affected the Democrats. Fine. Whatever. We don't care. We don't need them. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, let's keep doing this stuff. Yeah. 1.188. Not bad. Not bad. Decrease White House and other... I'll do it once. I'll do it once, too. It's still notable. Mm. Build a safety net. It's fine. Are we sure the up oh wait, yeah? You know what? I'll do that one. You know what? Even if it's increasing it, we gotta lower the fatigue. It's too high right now. Paying their fair share. Increase public fatigue. Paying for it all. Um decrease support among for everybody. Slightly increase. Okay, this is one. Pushing the businesses. Just because we that doesn't hurt fatigue yet. Yeah. Some American businesses haven't been too happy about the new push towards better working conditions. They talk about profit margins and Atlas Shrugged and bureaucracy. The simple fact of the matter is that they will continue to grumble and argue for the foreseeable future, and we must apply some pressure to make sure all of America's workers are getting the solid deal that we promised them. So, okay, that's good. We're small. That's good. That's okay for now. <sighs> Help the other America rise. They're 54. <sighs> and the, oh, God, they're influential again. Ugh. Help the other America rise is what we'll probably do next. Building the safety net's not bad. Oh, it's notable again. Are you kidding me, man? Come on. 
That's where we're pushing the businesses. That's where we're pushing them. We are dangerously close to losing support here. 1-1. One, one, 51 votes. 51! Hoity oh, 1 billion. Jesus Christ. Yeah, who wanted a future for the children? Holy crap. That is so much. Um, after this one, amend the fair. Yeah, let's do this one. Oh, look at this. Are you going to that? Please go ahead. Though the FLS, FLSA passed back in the late 30s, it was a near thing. In order to pass, the bill had to be cut down, while it was a good baseline. It simply doesn't go far enough to help American workers. It must go back in and use any spare political capital to amend the FL, FLSA to give real assistance to the working man. And expand the bill so it also really strengthens the working class. They're displeased. They're just so displeased. Anything to help lower fatigue. Nothing. Literally nothing here. Um, we can bring them up. Let's bring... Are there 71 now? 69? What? Ah, uh, do the other America. Jesus. Get rid of these Democrats. God dang it. Double or half? Paying for it all. Um, consider cutting the military. Pay their fair share. Let's do that one. In America, in fact, the world, most of the wealth is tied up in the bank accounts of the super wealthy. People with so much sheer wealth, they can never realistically spend it all. Rather than wait for all this wealth to trickle down, which would be downright absurd, we must take proactive action to secure funding for welfare programs by making the super rich pay for what they owe. You know what? If this will increase support, I'm going to hurt relations with everyone else first. So we're going to say that. That's what the third focus will do. Just because, like... It, it, it only makes sense to, since we barely have any support. So if we can raise up our center more later on, that'd be better. So paying for it all. While the concepts of a job score and of an unemployment benefits are noble and downright necessary, there are concepts that can be somewhat expensive. Money doesn't grow on trees, and the Harrington administration must find a way to pay for these for these in any future programs. Screw it, we're going to come over here and get some more city stuff. I don't care how long it takes. I really do not. Oh, Republicans, goodbye. Well, 49 still, not bad. Help the other America rise. Y'all do that one, yeah. 59. The working class dislikes the reforms. What? Why? Well, that doesn't make any sense. That literally makes no sense to me. What? Fair earnings for the worker. As a late night, he'd be working in the Oval Office, President Harrington said, pacing around the room. Jack was laid across his chair. At the same time, though, he knew he could not rest. The construction of the bill was getting closer and closer to being ready, yet with every passing day. More memories of his earlier days flooded towards him. Constant thoughts about his political right readings, viewings of the suffering of those in labor, and the uncaring of their superiors towards their difficulties. No kidding why so many are hungry out there. Can't even get a break to eat, can they? Harrington dwelled on his thoughts and finally sat, sat down after the hour of time he had had a battle with himself. Finally, he grabbed the phone, punched in that ever familiar number, Mr. President. It's eight in the evening. Can I help you? Secretary Newberger replied over the phone. Listen, it's about the Social Security Bill. I think I finally want to add in the amendments to the Fair Labor Act unit. Could you come in? Silence came in through the phone for a few moments. Give me half an hour and I'll, I'll be there, Mr. President. And the President's Secretary came in through the Oval Office just a minute early. You don't joke around with time, do you, Harrington said. Mr. President, I appreciate your humor, but this could completely change the situation. Adding those amendments could cause the business owners to lash out far worse than ever before, and we're already taking a deep crap from them. So what makes you think giving them more heck is going to do for us? With that, the Secretary's respectful disposition faded to the back, as Harrington thoughtfully nodded. Madam Secretary, my senior communications advisor have instructed the danger in it, and the bill's already facing the threat of death without the amendments. But let's face facts, Mr. Newberger. Every day, those hard-working Americans that we're trying to look after up are up here are not getting any respect for the work they do and or any way to move forward without them suffering or their suffering we need to help them but is it the right time the new, the new the bill could die the second it hits a congressional vote already harrington thought in the midst of silence they can count on they can't count on us if the bill doesn't get passed in the first place we have to do it they are counting on us economic equality safeguard the well-being support will go up nice there we go that's what we like to see 63 no one else supports it except for the republic well, no no the democrats do so whatever who cares right pay the fair share god dang it paying for it all you know what, let's do this one for you. I'm paying for it all first. And then pay the fair share next. Consider killing the military. Oh, we're going to piss off a lot of people. Imagine a different world than our own for a moment. Imagine the U.S. armed forces were able to invade Europe and crush the Great Menace. Imagine that the U.S. of A. was left to the sole hegemon of a war-torn world, policing and rebuilding countries that cannot rebuild or police themselves. Now pull your head out of your own butt. That world is far, far away from our own. 
U.S. is sadly not the sole hegemon of the world, and we are definitely not using our armed forces to rebuild Europe and Asia. We simply don't need such a large standing army, especially when you consider the fact that large-scale and conventional war is essentially dead in the water thanks to MAD at its most. Our army is going around the world continuing the rise of fascism through smaller proxy conflicts. With the sheer amount of money tied up in the military, wouldn't it make sense to downsize our bloated military and use it freed up cash to pay for the programs can help Americans right now? A letter from L.A., California. Mr. President, on my first night, <clears throat> working as a nurse in 61, a man pulled a knife on me. I was working at L.A. County General Hospital, but they changed the name a few years back anyway. The man's name was John. A cab driver found himself collapsed a few miles away, or a few blocks away from the hospital. A few minutes later, we had brought him in and put him up in a bed. He pulled a switchblade out and was holding it against my throat. It turns out that I didn't have a cent to his name and couldn't pay for services. Guess he thought taking a hostage would help the situ situation somewhat. We let him go, and I never saw John again. The police shrugged it off, said they finally showed up. When they finally showed up. Just another homeless who, wh why no, he said, would probably turn up dead in a week. When I saw that Medicare had passed, I thought about John working as a nurse. You see a lot of people's worries. I never saw John that night and hope that with this law, I'd never see, another, see that sort of worry again. Sincerely, Mary Anderson. I apologize for speaking really fast. I just, I'm excited for this, but it's, this is so, it's just, oh my goodness. We're, we're, we're cutting the line very close for everything we do. A letter from Bangor, Maine. Dear Mr. President, I'm currently a student at Hudson College, Maine. You might be able to tell by the way I rap, but English is not my first language. French is. I am the oldest of 18 children from Lewiston. My father, Gerard, worked in a mill. He beat me when I was 11. I ran away from home for two years. I lived on the streets. I worked in whatever job I could get. Shining shoes, washing dishes. I slept in the back room at strip clubs and horse stables, but I survived eventually. I became the only person in my family to graduate high school. I wanted to go to college instantly, or intensely, but at Houston, the the college entrance test was in English, and I was terrible with it, so I went to my state representative, Peter Snow, and he helped convince the admissions people to let me take a test in French. I passed, and they accepted me. Now, I'm studying for a business degree. I write for the school newspaper, and thanks to the Higher Education Act, I don't have to worry about the cost. I'm working hard and making something of myself, and you helped me with that, Mr. President, so thank you. Sincerely, Paul LePage. Cool, and technically, I realized that we don't have to do this stuff. Um, we don't have to go down this right side, so that was my fault. Um, darned if we do, hungry if we don't. President Harrington sat amongst his cabinet, each bringing another tension of level, level of tension to the room, with a sudden arrangement of a meeting, so much so that one could hear a pin drop if someone dared drop one. All eyes stared wide towards the president, who seemed to be distance, distracting himself, to avoid the pressures of the room with a cough, however, the man in the middle officially began the meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin this by saying that I am proud of each and every one of you. Without every secretary present, our administration would be nowhere near as successful as it has been. A round of silence with some awkward smiles greeting the president. Having said that, we're now nowhere near finishing the work we have planned, in particular being the social security network we have planned out to guarantee every American the ability to feed feel secure about the financial matters of their lives. With that in mind, such provisions are not without cost, but we must address the elephant in the room. The defense budget is easily one of the most easiest programs our expenditure to cut back on. The President's proposal is met with a wide range of nervous coughs, gasps, and shaking heads. With all due respect, Mr. President, the nation's security and safety is held up by the defense budget, and while we may desire the possibility of helping out those without stability, no one will have any form of stability if we're unsafe. Harrington nodded his head slowly, utterly. Finally, finally uttering, Miss Newberger, if you could please, what is taking up the majority of the U.S. budget? All eyes swiftly turned to Marine as she sat quietly low on the defense budget, sir. Interesting. Very interesting. It is interesting to see, like, the federal budget, like, as the years has gone by, like, in our own timeline, to see, like, what are we spending the most on? How is everything grouped together, you know? It's cool, but, uh, perhaps you're right, Humphrey. It's little then. There are many states in which the military is a major employer. Should our influence in them lacking, we risk more conservative voters defecting to the Democrats. Now, actually, I'm going to go here. And we're actually going to do perhaps you're right, Humphrey. Let's not settle it then, because this is actually suicide. This is this just sounds like political suicide, so... Um, I, I don't want to do that. We already have too many voters not liking or what we're doing, or we have too much fatigue, we, and we need political power, so... I'm not going to upset anyone else, because we're, we're still notable. Like, we are really hurting right now. Um, I don't want to tone down rhetoric anymore, but... The working class will decrease. Relations between the White House and other America will decrease. It's 91, and it's 31, which that's why they dislike our reforms. Favor these guys... Uh, we're notable, right? So, you know what? We could tone down rhetoric, but it bring up the working class. Uh, you know what? We'll, you know, let's do this one. Tone down rhetoric. Reassure the working class, though. So, that should be a 31. It shouldn't go down any further, right? Right? How much to raise taxes? To Americans are fundamentally good, friendly people. They like helping people, especially the fellow countrymen. The flip side of that coin is, however, that the Americans are not very fond of taxes. It's a delicate balancing act. New programs are generally supported, but new taxes are avowed. However, with the experts in the Harrington administration, we can surely walk that line so less fortunate Americans are protected, and the quiet grumbles of the more fortunate Americans stay quiet. And since this is we'll be coming up to another election year, we should be able to get everything done and passed by the time the next elections run around. I just want to finish out the, this presidency to see what we can do. 31, uh, let's see, 31, and it jumps up to, they just, 28, okay, it jumps down, okay, that's not good. 
They're furious. Holy crap, that's not good. Uh, reassure the working class. You can probably improve it one more time. Um, let's improve the other America if we possibly can, maybe. We'll see what happens. So, that's why I want to pay off everything first before we... Or do everything before the next election season. So, because after this, I mean, we're literally done, except for the systematic inequalities. So, after that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it won't matter, so it's okay. Right? Then it's okay. Oh, wait. How much race actually? Whoopsie. Drawing up a budget. Wrong one. Yeah, we're going to do this one first. There we go. Double or half. Drawing up a budget now. With some major questions settled, it's time to actually create a formal budget proposal. This is our opportunity to really show the American people our priorities. With this budget, we can now put our money where our mouth is, as it were. So my apologies about that. Oh, boy. Close out of that. We'll be okay for now. I'm not worried about that too much. Yeah, they're furious. That's really bad. It keeps going down, too. They hate our reforms. Everyone hates our reforms. I don't know. America likes it, though. I just... It's just that we're still notable. We just influence these guys. Uh, yeah, I want to keep raising this up. <sighs> Furious, that was so good. They hate reforms. The working class needs to like our reforms. Honestly, huh? We're doing the other America too, and I think I'm going to cut these guys down. Oh, they're dominant. How do they get dominant? Wait, what? Double or half? The entire West Wing of the White House was whirling with the sounds of phone calls and rushing of executive entrants and federal employees to aid everyone with their sudden rush of work to do. President Harrington, having just finished breakfast, was met with an employee rushing down the hall to get to the nearest secretary when he asked the young man what was going on. News got out about the potential rate of the rise of income taxes, sir, he said, giving the president a wave of anxiety. Campaign donors and other business owners are having a fit. Executive employees are taking a hit on all phones, he continued, rushing towards another office. Darn it all, Harrington said, making it back to his office while swiftly slamming the door on his way in his finger. He nearly fell down in the chair of his office and pulled himself up to look at the sheets of legislation on his desk. Picking up his phone, Secretary Neuberger, please come to my office immediately. Marine soon walked in with a swift take, please take a seat. Issued by a superior. Marine, now that the news is out regarding the income tax raise, we'll have to make a decision. If we sit on this, are we just going to keep losing more support, or should we just go with a full increase or not? Secretary Newberger was overwhelmed with a sudden demand on her, but demands should come all together. Well, Mr. President, I must admit that although it's quite the unpopular strategy, it would generate a substantial amount of income in for the coming treasury. Furthermore, while I'm no campaign manager, people are sure to appreciate a social security net, and if taxes are to provide funds for it, then I'd have to say that some would be appreciative of it, at least. Harrington pinched the bridge of his nose to deal with the stress of it all. Newberger was always one to provide legitimate facts, but he'd been darned to say that this would not come without to make his next election a whole new pain in the butt. Having said that, maybe this is just what we need, though, to rally those appreciative enough of it to his side to help the Social Security program. This time, I really don't think that we can afford to go that far, Marine. It's not bad. You're right, Marine. Thank you for your advice. Income tax would be out of the bill. Mm, oh, God dang it. Social Security Act. Oh, can we at least pass this? Can we at least pass this? Please let us pass this. The unemployment program benefits is a great start to securing a better future for Americans, but maybe it needs to be expanded into a larger Social Security program in order to get more comprehensively assist more Americans to get what they really need. Presidential nominee Franklin D. Roosevelt proposed a similar program back in the 30s, and while he was unsuccessful in securing the presidency, the people have chosen President Harrington, which means that America is clearly ready to try the Social Security idea. Just wait in the future until we actually have to start cutting it back, because... Uh, retiring ages or people retiring in the cost of it all when are you gonna raise the retirement age again you raising it up again what the heck so hey we're actually back up that's not bad that's better 69 nice they need they need to be squashed <sighs> significant is so bad I just want to get it past actually doing two of these things here five abuse of practices okay all right, boys and girls, I guess we'll be working to solve poverty. Nice. Increased spending among the working class will slightly stimulate the economy. The symptoms have been retreated. Any man can tell you the worst part of a fever is a terrible fatigue that leaves him stricken in bed. Unable to eat or laugh or do the same things a healthy man can. Just as it is with poverty, the gnawing hunger and the listlessness of unemployment leave a man just as stricken. Now, thanks to Harrington's policy, even the lowliest man can be sure that he can eat up and have a reasonable chance of picking himself up. If you like to be about the occupation before... If you want to read about it, please go right ahead. The systems we've established should ensure that the symptoms of poverty continue to be treated for the foreseeable future in time. A true elimination of the causes of hunger and woe should be properly addressed, but for now, the poor man can rest easy. Come on, baby, come on. Mm, I'm going to cut down the influence of the bourgeois. Yeah, cut them down, cut them down. They're way too high now. Oh my god, so bad. Oh, let's do this one too. We gotta get the PP. This campaign, like all the, like most, uh, most if not all the, like the U.S. presidents are kind of 
I won't say hair pulling, but it's, it's a little anxiety ridden. Just a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Oh my goodness. How do we get more money? You know what? I, I don't understand. Every time, like, it just randomly it happens. You're like, oh, here's a couple billion dollars. Sure. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here we go. Capital fights over breakthrough welfare bill. President Michael Harrington and his administration have unfailingly worked through the difficulties of executive ties legislation as they finally forwarded a landmark bill that seeks to completely revolutionize current standards of welfare within the U.S. Harrington has brought up the disastrous effects of economic recession before and remarked that the guarantee of a social security network or economic network could provide unheard of success for the American citizen and bring forth a new era of prosperity and care for the public sector, with workers and business owners alike being able to benefit from the program's successes. With that in mind, many White House executives have exhaustedly doled out their support for the President's bold actions lately. In particular, Secretary Marie Newberg has offered extensive work in lessening fears regarding the bill. Seeing President Harrington every day, I know that this piece of that this piece of legislation is something that comes from deep within him. To see the success of American citizens without a cost of the freedom, time, or effort. He believes in the American dream and just knows that it takes a great deal of amount of care and unity to see that we may prosper together. While Secretary Newberger's words indeed spark emotion, this opposition cite a lack of any form of unity in the bill. Many of Harrington's critics, including several Democratic senators, cite that such a program will bankrupt American reserves, while a wide range of far-right congressmen in the National Progressive Party see this as a direct violation uh, of American economic traditions. No one is quite sure as to the chance of success for President Harrington's bill, but emotions are high with everyone present, with freedom and security for all. So improved relations with other America, uh, influence of other America will increase, better relations with the working class, but with the influence of the working class will increase, with the White House and the with the rich, and the influence of the rich will go down, so it's the middle class, both. We get low pensions, we get generous unemployment subsidies, and we get acceptable minimum wage, which I don't like just because it hurts our max factories. Um, we get a, a six-hour workday? Bro, this guy's radical compared to where we, where we were at before. <laughs> Poverty does rapidly improve, though, which is nice. We remove a new dawn. Wait, what's a new dawn? Um, so we remove... Oh, that's good. And defeat is just a dying memory. Look at that. Nice. We remove that, which is great. We get me we replace medium taxation with high taxes. Oh, that pee, pee Oh, no. And low income weighted with flat taxes. Okay, so we're currently at 1.1. Pee pee. Systematic inequalities, a specter of racial inequality still haunts our nation, and exercising it will unfortunately require a lot more than simply declaring all men to be created equal. The specter is a lot more subtle than many things. Many ethnic minorities face repression at every level of society, from the obvious hurling up racial epithets, right down uh, to the merely being overlooked for unemployment, denied places at university, and otherwise marginalized all on account of the race. We must root out the problem from every nook and cranny of the society. The only miracle will ever be made a more perfect union is if we ensure that even the most subtle racial offenses are squashed. Everyone deserves a chance and all deserve to live a life free from obstacles brought on by the circumstances of their birth. But if you enjoyed this video, holy crap, it's been a tumultuous one. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will potentially finish out Michael Harrington's presidency. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.